Hey everybody, Jabba the Griffin here. Callus Invitational Tournament. Losers bracket, or, or lower bracket rather. Round three, we got Fakes versus my former T Grace member, Roro McMegan. Uh, we got game one about the about the pop-up. Uh, I've heard this is a interesting one. I don't want to spoil too much, but I heard that there is a uh, nonsense, uh, tomfoolery, haberdashery, and all that good shit. So let's jump into it and and you know let's see how crazy it gets. Break break uh, T tar out of the gate for those T tar. Break break H P grass. That that's the lead. Lead he went with. Lum. <laughs> Lumber. So we start off with just a, a fun time. Um, now we're going to get into a, a bit of a soft-boiled war. Uh, well, he might just T-wave here because then he can just start uh, boiling up. And he does and fake switches in the uh, Metagross, which, you know, maybe also is just uh, weird mixed nonsense. You can't you can't wall anything if if everything's mixed nonsense. Uh, Mc, Roro, McMagan, Roro, McMagan. I'm gonna call them both throughout this entire thing. Uh, gets the crit, but the gross just ends up booming anyway. Wants to take out the uh, the Starmie. I'm a little surprised he went for that there. Fakes just punching as much as he can with the. Uh, Lax Boy, which has seen an, a tremendous uptick in usage this tournament uh, compared to what it has been in the past. As far as I know, obviously there are just straight up stats on that. So, you know, somebody else could just give that to you. Fake's just going old school, uh, straight up uh, GSC territory, just booming with everything he has in. Uh, I'm sure if uh, T-Tar could boom, it would. Gengar eats the T wave, which is not good for a Gengar, believe it or not. And that just booms too. That's the third boom of the game. And so now we have uh Janktar versus a Zapdos and a a Pert. And then both have a uh, unrevealed. I would take a guess, but I'm usually never right. Uh so I'm not even gonna bother. You would think that was a, that would be a skill that you would get after years and years of playing, but quite frankly, I, I just never, never bothered. I always tried to go the route of, of trying to just force them to reveal. I don't like to play guessing games. Some teams are obvious, like, you know, usually Magneton teams are obvious. Like here, you know, McMegan could have anything in the back. You could have a Gengar. You'd have to almost analyze what would he have brought in at this point. And here's the Drachi. And that's a straight up uh, Endeavor perk. Uh, the Rachi looks like it's super. And then Fakes has the Zard on the back end. So he should, assuming that's HP Grass, he should be able to clean that up, right? He misses the Fire Blast, which is going to be rough because then the HP Grass will put the perk into uh, Torrent Range. Well, it would have killed with a pump anyway, um, but it won't kill it. And then, interesting end game. <laughs> that's not super. Um, that's actually, uh, I don't know why I read that as super. This is going a little too fast. Let's pause it for a second. Um, so was that just some body slam HP grass, right? Because that, that did nothing. Yeah, so that has to be HP grass with the 7%. Sub body slam HP grass. That's interesting. Um, lands the body slam on the Charizard. So if we go back, because this was huge, because if he just hits this, then that's a kill into it with HP grass. But if he HP grasses anyway, then this kills. Then this goes in. Uh, what was the Jirachi at? 
I don't know. That's tough. But that that was a huge, huge miss. The, the Jirachi took a endeavor earlier, right? So you could have just clean, maybe clean it up with Hydro Pump. I wonder if you even ran that calc because that that's one way to win it is to just then sub down with this um, and then pump uh, to clean up. Anyway, and that's a it's a para. Yo, dude, I press HP grass. That's unfortunate. I uh, you probably probably pressed it again, and he probably pressed it again. <laughs> oh, that's fucking bullshit. That's some dumb shit. Is he gonna do it again? There he goes. There, there it is. Okay, he gets it through. Um, so now, if I was right about the uh, oh, he got the piece again. Sorry, I'm just skipping through because this is getting this is getting brutal. Okay, he finally hits. Uh, I'm not sure why he doesn't brass again. Why he's punching and why this is EQing. Uh, Cal, you know what? Callus mentioned this to me, and he's like, "Why did they refuse to uh, kill each other?" And I'm sure someone uh, out there listed a reason, but I'm not sure I'm too sure of it. Um, this is fucking weird. What? <laughs> there's got there's got to be some some one of those situations where it's just I don't know a fact, right? That that is obvious to you know fake focus punch brick break. break. Okay. You know, you don't need to sub, you just you just fucking fo you just straight focus punch the uh the blissy. Why 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 bother doing it any other way? Um Yeah, because it's not like Jirachi can get a like a wish off or anything, but it's gonna be faster than the pert. Why doesn't he just like go one of these random turns? Go to the pert and then just sub. Clearly, clearly, oh, well, he's EQ'd a lot. That's probably why you, you can't bounce in on that EQ. So his new strategy is to just fucking what? <laughs> I mean, there's this is no winning. You just, you got to just take a turn and go to the pert and just hope that it's not one of the turns that he uh, EQs. How many EQs does he have left? Seven? I don't know. I feel like he's going to be fucking around for a while. Oh, if 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 Roro plays it like a coin flip, then obviously Fakes just doesn't want to, um, and that's you know that's how it's playing out right now. Um, oh, that's that's bad for Fakes because then that just that just ends this entire game, and he can't he can't go into the perk because. That happens. He can't stay out. I think... I think... His best chance of winning was essentially a coin flip. I mean, you can see how many. You could, we can go through this and, and see how often he was throwing out EQs. Um... He did it. He did it a lot early on, and then he started going for cor curses. Then he tossed out some check quakes, double. Then he went to curses three. It was it was after those initial earthquakes. It was better than coin flip odds. Um, the way the way Roro was playing it. So maybe. Did did he even do an insta insta check after the first curse earthquake? No, he didn't do an instant check. Um, so maybe maybe that's a good spot to do it. Um, assuming that they're not just gonna go curse and then throw the EQ out again. Um, I w I would have done it. No, because look, yeah, that's that's a really good this set right here. I like by Roro because. Uh, you throw the check out, then you throw another one to 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 kind of get in their head, and that that's exactly what he did. He he essentially got in in his head, um, kind of like that time where I uh, 
guessed incorrectly like 20 straight times against Ojama with a belly drum. If someone's just if someone's got you locked in, they got you locked in, and that seems like the the way McMegan ran his his EQs through. I think uh, I think Fakes psyched himself out when he, on based on the numbers, it looks like he probably had better than a fifty percent chance if he would just you know almost flip the coin at the beginning of you know starting on turn like. 37 if you just start flipping coins you know and just going in uh, with pert on one of them then you can you can come through and grab the win but instead uh there was some nonsense that game too uh it was it was an interesting one though i i like those kind of uh when you're looking at that end game scenario where it's not it's not your standard you know, run through, you know, you, you're looking at landlock. Reminds me of almost, uh, I forget what Gen started, Gen 5, Gen 6, um, Sucker Punch Wars. Uh, they can get a little frustrating because they're, they're annoying. But, they, you know, that's essentially what this, this is. It's frustrating to be in them, but it, it's really interesting for the spectator because you get to watch two people smash their head against the wall. <laughs> And then finally, when someone gets it right, or you know, it's it's always nice when when the the player you know being sucker punched uh, guesses correctly on the turn they take off, and then and then goes in. So this would have been cool if you know Fakes nailed one of those turns into a, into Pert and was able to clean. You know, assuming Pump misses or Pump hits rather, it probably would miss knowing how the game works, but. Anyway, uh, interesting match. Um, a, a lot less weird than I think it initially seems. Uh, it was an interesting position. I think both players knew what their win condition were. Um, I think maybe Fake should have pulled the trigger earlier. Um, although maybe he maybe he saw a way out that is essentially guaranteed, uh, barring that burn. Maybe maybe he was looking at it from a different perspective. Where, you know, although uh, notably on the flip side. Did he he attacked every turn? Okay, so there was no way Jirachi can come in. Oh, he had he, you know he had full four full attacks. It might be able to come in on an HP grass, but who knows? Okay, so there wasn't any chance for McMegan to play the reverse game, um, except unless he wanted to predict one of the eighteen you know full paras that happened. Anyway, like I was about to get saying, good good game, well played. Uh, a little luck involved as always, and uh, let's get into game two.